because people are, be are free to be more compassionate now and we begin to understand the principles of equality and equal rights unlike at any other time in our political past. I believe people have moved on and in fact have, have, have moved on more than most politicians in this House. It will be the politicians who will be playing catch up and it may be the reason why, behind so many deciding not to campaign or canvass in the lead up to the referendum. I for one will be canvassing in my constituency of Donegal. There I have met many people who believe that the 8th needs to go and have seen the change in attitudes over time. Never before would somebody feel, someone feel comfortable coming up to me to express their views and hopes for a successful repeal vote. And it's reflective of the change in discourse around abortion and women's health care overall. However, abortion has still been treated as a dirty word because public discourse on this issue has been suppressed for so long. It will be important that while we canvass and campaign that a safe place, space is created for people who want to engage because it will be, it will be the undecided that will determine the vote. Still there is a lot of work to do, particularly against the backdrop of mistruths and fake, fake news. The controversy unfolding in relation to Facebook and Cambridge Analytica at the minute should be a lesson to us all of the extent that opponents will go to win a campaign and that the power the, power of the private sector interests have to manipulate campaigns. It also serves to remind us that the real threat to democracy and the need to, re to resource our regulatory and oversight mechanisms for fair referendums and campaigns to take place. Unfortunately, it is too late for, for any reforms to be carried out in time for this referendum, resulting from the current investigation in Facebook and Cambridge Analytica. But I am glad to see that the Data Protection Commissioner is looking into Facebook's role within the, con within the controversy unfolding in the UK and its effects on data usage here. This is essentially important considering, especially important considering the fact that Facebook EU headquarters are located in Dublin. It shows the real need for tighter regulation around companies' use of citizens' information, but also the need to monitor false news. Too often we are exposed to myths and mistruths, pseudoscience represented as fact, and indiv individuals claiming to be professionals in a particular field who can speak with authority on an issue, despite not having any credentials to back it up. Manipulation of the truth is already recurring ahead of the referendum by third parties, by individuals and by campaigns who want to exploit the fear of the public. But how can someone represent false statistics as we have seen in relation to Down syndrome in the UK and Iceland and be quoted by media without any prior fact checking? How is it that someone is allowed to stand in front of a school with grotesque Im imagery which does not adequately portray the truth of abortion and which causes distress to vulnerable people and children? I echo the call from, from opposition benches for greater transparency in line with politi in li online political campaigns ahead of the dissemin dissemination of disinformation ahead of the abortion referendum. Attention has been drawn to the fact that there have been fake Facebook pages purporting to be un unrelated to the referendum campaign, yet ma material, yet provide, include phrases and messages similarly used by no camps and who are not sanctioned by the no side either. Neither are they, par they parties registered with SIPO. I understand that even SIPO has called for the government to, for clarification with regards to third, third party involvement in campaigns and that despite attempts to seek this clarification, the government has not responded. The next step will require us as par parliamentarians to use our privileged access to information and facts to vote for legislation which best protects the rights of our constituents. I believe if we truly, if we are, we truly engage with our constituents, we would know that all are, all are deserving of equal, equal rights to proper health care and bodily autonomy, and would therefore be supporting legislation to allow for unrestricted abortion up to 12 weeks. I support the committee's recommendation for unrestricted abortion up to 12 weeks. However, I believe that gestational limits have no place in legislation. Gestational limits are, are merely immoral political barriers for people who need, to fo need an abortion and will only create a string of more hard cases in the future. If we say we trust or support women, then we must know that they will make the best decision for themselves and the baby in the later stages of pregnancy. Abortion is required for a range of medical reasons outside of the 12 weeks limit, which would fall outside the categories proposed by the committee. What we must have is a system that supports all women, no matter what decision they make, noting that it is their decision and we need to be simply there to support them. I understand that the Together for Yes campaign will be officially launching this, launching this Thursday, which includes a plethora of organisations and local groups coming to, together to support repeal. I want to commend them for all the hard work that they have done in bringing about the conversation on abortion with the dignity and respect to the, central of the centrality of the debate. 
We must also recognise the medical community who have had their professionalism politically scrutinised so much since the Eighth Amendment was placed in the Constitution, and yet who have come out strongly in defence of women's rights and health care at home. And most striking are those who have come out of their own stories, so varied and compelling, so strongly and so brave despite the lingering toxicity created by the Eighth Amendment. Let's not forget how heavy the Constitution must have weighed on so many women in this state, and how heavy it still weighs, weighs for many who have carried the burden of the Eighth Amendment. Imagine that, lift, that weight lifted once the yes votes that carried, those who have made the decision to terminate, who travelled to see it through, and who came back and told their stories, would no longer be seen as criminals under the Eighth, but as liberators of a long oppressive regime with no place in a modern compassionate society. Um. Thank you, that's Ken Corley. Um, 